Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us to stay curious today. Today, we've got astronauts, astronauts, astronauts. We got, as I reach over here, we got some astronaut birthdays today, okay, that you're going to want to stay tuned for. And, uh, and we've got, of course, some space history to talk about a little bit. We've got a couple astronauts celebrating Black History Month. And we're going to show you some pictures of Crew 6 uh, arriving at the Kennedy Space Center today, courtesy our friend Mark Usiak. So Marty Winkle, my co-producer, he worked on the lunar modules that went to the moon. Then he worked on the engines of the mighty Atlantis stack that's here behind me, hidden a little bit behind me there, my my new shirt. How do I look at my new shirt there, Marty? That's good, Mark. Well, well thank, thank you. you. My, my little sister... Sherry says, uh, uh, less vests, more shirts. So uh, I bought this one myself, but little sis, you can buy me in all of them that you want. So anyway, we're going to have some fun today, learn a little bit about a lot of astronauts here and uh, a little bit about the book that uh, it's the Kelly twins birthday, Mark and Scott. And Scott wrote a really good book that Marty and I give two thumbs up to, don't we, Marty? It's a very, very good book. We're going to highlight that a little bit today. So to kick it off, we want to alert everybody. April 15th will be our Shuttle Fest 2 celebration. We're still putting the whole program together on that, but it's going to be a documentary about the Mobile Launch Platform 2, very historic uh, platform that the, launched uh, Apollo 11 and uh, 51L of Challenger and a lot of historic launches that they they, they took it apart, sold it for scrap, and our good friend uh, uh, Cotton has done a wonderful documentary on this thing, and we're going to feature that with astronauts and uh, space workers around that mobile launch platform. Every shuttle fest every year in April will have a theme to it, so we're already working on 2024 and 2025. So hope that you can attend. If not, we will do it uh, virtually, of course. Well, we've got uh, a lot of excitement ramping up here at the Space Coast as we're going to launch a, a human crew, four of them, to the International Space Station. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that crew. The uh, four members of the crew uh, include a NASA astronaut that's going up uh, uh, for the fourth time and three rookies. But a little bit about the patch here, Marty. And uh, we've got T-shirts here at the American Space Museum with their patch on here. And it's a very interesting patch. Sailing across the Cruise 6 patch, the ship represents both the destination of the International Space Station and the vessels that countless explorers have steered into the unknown. Uh, the ISS uh, there in the, the stern there anchors the dawn of missions to the moon and Mars. The ship's sail is a symbol of the 2012 cosmonaut class and has a relative radii matching those of the Earth, the Moon, and Mars. The Draco constellation, shown in this uh, pattern there, represents the commercial crew program and shares a name with the thrusters that maneuver our Dragon spacecraft. Uh, uh, and then the ship's dragon figurehead looks to the future as we also look back at Earth, gratefully for the tireless hours of all those who support the mission. So very simple, but always chock full of symbolism, these kind of patches. And uh, uh, we've got them on black t-shirts, I believe, Marty, and you'll be selling those 2.07 a.m. that Saturday night, Sunday morning. So we're going to stay up late Saturday night, and it should be a fun circus over there at Space View Park, where I like watching the, the launches. And don't know where our buddy Mark UCX is going to be. Don't know where he is right now, except he's here on the Space Coast. I was hope He did stop by the museum, and I was in a board meeting uh, with our tourism bureau here in Titusville. But Mark took this picture this morning, I think, as the astronauts arrived. And there you've got left to right... You've got uh, on the far left is Sultan Al Nayadi, uh, his first space flight, and he'll be part of uh, Expedition 68 through 70 uh, the next five months. Steve Bowen is a space 
uh, shuttle commander on his fourth flight. And Steve is leaning up there. He's got the gray hair, Marty. Woody Hoberg is another NASA astronaut. And uh, uh, Andrea Fedyev is another rookie. A Russian going up. That's right, folks. Russians and Americans and uh, the United Arab Emirates flying together in space as friends. Apparently, they came back, they came, arrived in this uh, Lear jet there. Uh, of course, uh, they don't fly their own T 38 jets like the astronaut, uh, astronauts do, NASA astronauts. Um, but uh, part of this uh, was this crew going up right now is uh, they're going to have to bring back the crew five that's up there. And yet they're going to have to launch, I think, this weekend, a for an uncrewed Soyuz spacecraft uh, because the Soyuz number 23 that's up there right now sprung a leak in its cooling system. And they're not they're afraid to put people in it to bring it back for the reentry. So they're they're Ubering up another Soyuz empty. Uh, that will bring Crew 5 back. So once we have Crew 6 safely up there at the space station sometime Sunday, um, that'll bring 14 humans on space, 11 on the International Space Station and 3 on the Chinese Tangong Space Station makes 14, and that's the most ever to be in space at one time. So we're going to be looking forward to that. Thank you, Mark Usiak, for your photographs there. We look forward to his launch, and uh, we may drag him on Stay Curious set here on Thursday or Friday. I'm sure we will. Wednesday, we got a great treat for you. I'll spring the surprise. We got astronaut Charlie Walker, a taped interview with him that we did over the weekend. You're going to enjoy a lot of uh, good conversation with Charlie Walker who was a three-time astronaut, three flights in 17 months in 1984 and 85. So you're not going to want to miss that. Tomorrow will be Charlie Walker. There's the close-up, another close-up of the crew there. Uh, and uh, once again, you've got uh, two commercial astronauts, two NASA astronauts. Uh, it should be a, a great mix of, of people up there. Well, Ladies, I'm sure most women out there recognize this handsome astronaut, Chris Cassidy, who has spent 378 days off this planet. Uh, he is among the first of famous hands that are being photographed by photographer Dennis Murphy in a uh, nonprofit promotion called My Hand, My Cause. All right. And uh, for $105, you can own this print of Chris's hand with a space glove on there. Uh, and they're, they're given every $75 sold to uh, the celebrity's charity. All right. So Nick has, or, uh, Chris Cassidy has chosen the National Medal of Honor Museum Foundation. And uh, $75 out of every 8 by 10 sold of his hand will go to his place there. And a very well-known astronaut, Cassidy, a Navy SEAL. Uh, he actually uh, saved uh, astronaut uh, uh, Luca Parm Parmatello uh, life when his suit was filling up uh, in his helmet uh, when one of his cooling loops sprung a leak and he got him in the, the EVA uh, exit post there right away. But thought we'd just share that with you. There's another retired NASA astronaut doing great things to promote his own uh, legacy as well as his nonprofit. There's those astronauts there. So we want to talk a little bit about Black History Month, of course, this month. And uh, 14 African Americans have gone to space. And here is one that I think is super duper special. Mr. Victor Glover. Marty, I think you're looking at the first man of color to be on the moon. That's my prediction. I think Glover will be the commander and walk on the moon on Artemis III. Uh, they say they want a person of color and a woman, so there's several women of color to choose from there to check both boxes. But 
it's just not the color of their skin. It's the qualifications of these people. And this man is very well qualified. Grew up in Pomona, California. Cliff Watson, our Aussie buddy, he's in Pomona, Australia. Good Wednesday to you, mate. What you having for brekkie there? I hope it's got bacon in it. <laughs> so uh, Cliff's always sending us uh, money, too. That's what those stars are all about. So thank you. Uh, Glover was a member of the Expedition 64 going up to the space station on Crew Dragon uh, 4. And uh, he was the pilot of the first operational flight of the Dragon. Actually, that had been uh, Crew 1. Uh, and he's the first African-American ISS Expedition crew member to live on the ISS. Not on a short stay like African-Americans on the shuttle did. Uh, only 14 African Americans have gone to space out of 300 NASA astronauts. Uh, and uh, he was quite proud of that. He has four daughters, Victor Glover does. There, there he is on the space station, he and his wife. Let me get you his wife's name there. Uh, Donna, or uh, Diona. Diona Odom Glover. They have four daughters. So, wow. He was a quarterback and running back for the Ontario High Jaguars in California. He's actually Athlete of the Year in 1994, Marty. Uh, in California, that's no small uh, uh, achievement there. Uh, he was in the Air Force uh, and become a Master of Science Systems Engineering. Uh, he piloted the F-A-18 and was a Air Force test pilot. So uh, he has stared danger in the face of danger, of course, and was a proud member of Expedition 64 when uh, Crew 1 was launched uh, back uh, two years ago, Marty. We're going to be celebrating that. So anything else about Victor Glover there? Um, oh, he's, he's done four spacewalks. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, while he was on the space station in February 2021, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, talked to him on the phone. And uh, according to NASA, the conversation ranged from the legacy of human spaceflight to Glover's history-making stay as the first African-American to live on the International Space Station. So you're going to hear some great things from him, whether he's going to be a moonwalker or commander of the gateway, he's going to be involved in it, Marty. You better, better believe it. So, uh, Victor Glover for you. Now let's talk about a lady on Black History Month. Joan Higginbotham. All right, she's 58 years old, 13 days in space, born August 3rd, 1994, or uh, 64, in Chicago, Illinois. Proud Windy City gal. Uh, all the way, she graduated from the University of Carbondale. Then she got her master's from the Florida Institute of Technology just down the road here. Uh, Joan Higginbotham was an electrical engineer and uh, worked on the uh, shuttles at Kennedy Space Center as a payload electrical engineer. And so within six months, she was a lead of orbiter experiments on Columbia. She later reconfigured the... Uh, electrical system for payloads in all four shuttle orbiters and uh, then she applied to be an astronaut and uh, she was uh, accepted and assigned to crew 126 for her launch on November 21st 2007 and uh, she uh, let's see spent 13 days in space on her she's 116 was her flight okay she was going to be on 126, and they swapped her out for uh, Don Pettit, according to my notes there. The third African-American to go to space behind Mae Jameson and Stephanie Wilson. Okay, she's very involved in the academic community uh, at this time and promoting space. And, of course, an inspiration, not to just to African-American women, but, but women all over the world. There's Joan Higginbotham. Spending her time in space there. You see the lower bay. There's the remote manipulator arm there looking out the payload bay window. So uh, she's one we'd love to see talk at the visitor's complex there as we enjoy all of our astronauts uh, that come out there to the astronaut encounter. And by the way, if you didn't see 
Mr. Nick Thomas on Stay Curious yesterday. Go look up on our YouTube channel and check out a wonderful conversation with Nick Thomas, the Kennedy Space Center Visitors Complex Astronaut Wrangler, as we talked about the one and only Mr. John Glenn on the 61st anniversary of his historic Mercury Atlas 6 flight. Well, Marty, uh, time to don the birthday cap here, okay? And uh, there we go, fitting on my square head there, as we get ready to celebrate the uh, birthday of the 59th birthday of the most celebrated twins in space history, and that would be Scott and Mark Kelly there, all right? And that's Scott on the left and Mark on the right, I know that because Scott's got his name on the pound there. No, he's actually, of course, uh, flew with the Russians on the uh, on expeditions uh, once for 11 months. Historic year on space, though I keep pointing out, Marty, it was 11 months. It wasn't an entire year, though they, they call it a year. But these boys were born in Orange, New Jersey on February 21st, 1964, to parents who worked as police officers. Scott has 520 days in space and three spacewalks on four missions, while brother Mark, on the right there, rocking a mustache usually, he's the incumbent U.S. Uh, senator from Arizona, and he's got 54 days in space on four shuttle missions. Both have been pilots and commanders, okay? Both were Navy careers, but we've got to look and just see how cute and adorable they were growing up as I take my my uh, birthday cap off there. Uh, uh, now, Marty, Marty, I will spring on you guys is a twin. All right. He is a fraternal twin, though. Did your parents dress you up uh, like uh, in matching outfits? When we were about that age, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd like, I want to see some pictures of that. I met your brother, and, and though they're fraternal twins, you always got that similarity a little bit in there, but. Uh, uh, that's a pretty cute outfit there, though, Marty, uh, to embarrass these guys with. Um, they are really both outstanding uh, men that have contributed a, a lot to not just the space program, but their causes. Uh, there's a, a rare shot of Scott with a, a mustache on there when they had hair before they went to the bald, uh, the shaved look on there. Uh, how exciting would that be to be twin brothers and to be chosen at the same time to join the Astronaut Corps in 1966? They were in the largest astronaut class, 44 of them, called the Sardines. All right. And uh, there they are, face to face there. Let's talk a little bit about each one of them. Mark Kelly was twice a pilot on Endeavor and Discovery, STS-108 and 121. He was twice a commander, 124 in uh, Discovery, in Discovery's final flight, 134. Okay, and that's Scott on the, that's Mark on the left that, with the mustache. Uh, he married Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, who you remember, God bless her, she survived an assassination attempt in 2011, and four or five people were killed at this rally. And uh, Mark's become a U.S. Senator, uh, he's a Democrat, and he's a real uh, uh, gun control advocate, obviously, with what happened to his wife. And uh, uh, so he's uh, this is his first term as a senator, and uh, we'll just see how he likes it. We've had a couple other senators, uh, astronauts, uh, thinking of Harrison Schmidt, and, uh, of course, um, uh, Jack, uh, uh, not Jack, yeah, Jack um, uh, Schmidt uh, from Colorado. Uh, right, Marty, from Paul 13. Uh, Schweiker. Schweiker, yeah, Jack Schweiker. Uh, was elected but died of cancer before he served. So, and of course, uh, John Glenn, uh, he had 25-year career there. So you never know how it's going to work out. Uh, I, I know that Harrison Schmidt kind of got tired of the politics and all that sort of stuff, he says from time to time. Anyway, that's Mark Kelly's story about his career. Just a mere 54 days in space. Uh, a little a big bro. Scott was born first. Uh, he brags about that. And, uh, and we're going to talk about how both these brothers were given biomedical tests. All right. And 
when uh, Brother Scott went to go to the space station, uh, they, um, I think I got another picture of him there. We'll talk about that in a second. When Scott went to the space station for uh, 355, 350 days, something like that, um, they did an analysis of these first opportunity, did space change these brothers' uh, DNA, and I'll reveal that here in just a second. Um, so, talk about Scott Kelly. Scott's uh, first space flight was a pilot of uh, Discovery uh, at 103, uh, the third servicing mission of the Hubble. Uh, then he was on 118, and they become the commander uh, of, uh, oh, he went, then he went on a Mir space station, of course, to start Expedition 26. And then he went back, that was in 2010, then 20. 12 is when he famously stayed up there for a year, though it was from, um, what was the exact dates? March 27th, 2015 to March 1st, 2016, 11 months uh, on the space station, uh, which tickles me because they always say a year, Marty. And how many times does do NASA people like Marty correct me for, you know, just a little bit, just a hair off, you know, 11 months, think quite a year. I know that. So that's why I point that out. So a uh, little side joke there. Well, the preliminary results from NASA's twin studies found that 7% of Kel the, the, their genes no longer matched. Okay. All right. Scott's genes, no matter, no matter no longer match those of his twin mark all right while in space researchers monitored kelly's metabolites chocolates and proteins or cryotokines and proteins to learn how space travel affects biological systems though most of kelly's biological changes return to baseline levels after returning to earth seven percent of his genes point to possible long-term changes according to the study very interesting Here's another interesting fact I'll bet you didn't know, Marty. In 2007, uh, Scott was treated successfully for, for prostate cancer. And Mark was also diagnosed and successfully treated for prostate cancer. So men get that prostate exam, okay? Even astronauts get prostate cancer. And we can't emphasize how important that is, and I get checked regularly myself. So, um, well... Mark Ke uh, Scott Kelly wrote in 2017 this memoir uh, called Endurance, A Year in Space. See, A Year in Space doesn't say 11 months, Marty, in space. <laughs> uh, a year, uh, but uh, a great book. And I'll bet, I wonder if Doug Forrest has read it. And there's our other artist, Chris Kelly. Uh, and Tom Usiak's watching, making sure his baby brother got down here okay. And Carlton Bailey's furiously cleaning up his hacienda there for uh, his guests to arrive for launch weekend. And Dave Stangy's up in Michigan wishing he was here. Thank you, Dave. Steve Hammer, Tom Silentano, Cynthia Rossi. Uh, haven't seen Chalad Zan for a while. Thank you for watching. Uh, Cliff has sent us 400 stars. That's about 15 bucks, folks. And we do get a check from Facebook about that. Larry Pusker, Gary Gerald, uh, and uh, we can't, and Bill Whiting, we can't thank you enough for staying curious with us. And guys, you need to buy this book, all right? And Marty, when we have a book that has this many little, this, I think Marty read this, or Nick, or Nick did, our collections guy, and then I read it. And there's always, you know, good spots there where they're reading it. Don't have to read the whole book. Just go to where they've dog-eared stuff there. I know where that's the good stuff is. I don't care who the, who your grade school teacher was, really. But uh, I do care about your experiences in space there. And, uh, oh, there's a couple things I've been looking for in there that I'll be happy to read. A little, uh, a couple inspirational notes there. But what I'm going to tell you about this book, it's not your usual astronaut's memoir, all right? Kelly, and this is, I'm, I'm talking from a review here. Kelly recounts dumpster diving on the International Space Station for discarded meals after a supply capsule was destroyed and ending up with some dude's used underwear in his hand, all right? 
He writes about the congestion at the space station, headaches, burning eyes he endured from high carbon dioxide levels in the space station, and the feeling that no one cared at Mission Control in Houston. Uh, so you can get the blues in space, is, is, is what he wrote about. Uh, he talks about, this is Scott Kelly, about how prostate cancer surgery in 2007, I think it was, almost cost him being banned from space station duty. And yet he went on to set the, the, the American record for 11 months. And how his vision problems during an earlier space flight also, also almost cost him a one-year mission. And also in this book, Marty, he went to the tattoo parlor before a launch. All right, not to get his logo of his mission tattooed to his arm. He went there to get black dots all over his body to make it easier to take ultrasound tests in orbit. All right. And then he also talks about how he fashioned extra puke bags for a nauseous crewmate. All right. You remember reading about that? Yeah. yeah. Who was the crewmate? Oh, God. You remember? No. Yeah. Entertaining book, isn't it, Marty? He wanted to tell the whole story, all right, but here's a little-known incident that even he didn't know about until he was researching this book five until five years later. And he's on the space station in 2010 during his first stint when a Russian cosmonaut and, and, and uh, two cosmonauts were doing a spacewalk in Olog Skriptika, uh, Olog, let's just say, happened to hit... Uh, he was untethered and started floating away. Luckily, he hit an antenna floating away. As the other cosmonaut was looking at him, thinking, man, he's untethered. And that antenna bounced him back towards the space station, and he was able to grab it and saved his life. Kelly was aboard at the time, and he didn't hear about this till five mission till till his year long mission five years later, when the cosmonauts in space were talking about it, and they were casually talking about, "Hey, Olog, remember when he almost lost him in space? He he wasn't tethered and all that." And and Kelly in the books going like, "Really? Holy crap! Are you kidding me? I was there. You guys didn't tell me that." And he remembered that Olog looked shaken, and, and but he thought it was because it was his first. Uh, spacewalk outside so read this wonderful book endurance by scott kelly uh it is chock full of some great stuff in there and uh and we don't even get any money off promoting it there marty so uh oh my gosh i forgot to get the bag in uh uh birthday in there so um uh, we got steve bag ben, uh, ben birthday and I don't see my notes on it, Marty. Where is that dog going? At? We've got a birthday tomorrow. I was going to talk about, uh, but uh, uh, James uh, Bagian is uh, there. His birthday's tomorrow. Uh, happy birthday to him! I think he's seventy-one. I'm trying to remember where he was born, and it's, I'm blanking out because I didn't bring my my cheat sheet with me here. So we'll just let it go at that, and you'll see that on Facebook tomorrow. And gosh, where was he born? I'm, I'm gonna, th I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say on there. But so, Marty, thank you. Good uh, Streamlabs uh, production there today. Hope everyone enjoyed our little program about astronauts. I had a board meeting today and a bunch of other stuff going on this morning. Some of my days are like that, but we want you to watch tomorrow, as we're gonna have Marty will not be here, but we're going to have, not Marty, but we're going to have uh, um, uh, UCAC here. Or UCAC's in here. UCAC just came in. And come on over here beside me, Mark. We're ending here. It's been a short stay curious. But there's Charlie Walker with uh, Marty. And we taped a wonderful conversation. Is uh, sneaking on here. All right, buddy. Pull that chair up over there. There. Sit down here a minute. We'll talk about a minute here about being a rocket photographer this week. What did we do? And uh, we had the uh, the Kelly boys' birthday. Hello. Great to see you. Hey. Welcome, Mark Usiak. I got to my our... Amish beard for you. He does. Did you bring me a, a, a shoe fly? Shoe fly pie. <laughs> I thought you still were working on that last one. Well, you know they do last a long time. It's uh, about <laughs> like just having a. a uh, a cake that is nothing but uh, sugar. Uh, brown sugar in there. But good to have you here. He's just Thanks, fresh sir. down from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, we were bragging about uh, Marty and this guy tomorrow. Wow. We're going to have a uh, uh, 
uh, Charlie Walker yep. on here. You met Charlie a few times, I'll I bet. certainly have, yep. That guy's been to space, folks, three times in 17 or 18 months, in 84 and 85, because he was a, uh, a mission specialist astronaut that was not an astronaut class. He was more of a scientist uh, pharmaceutical astronaut. Network. Does not have a gold astronaut pin. They didn't give him to that class. Really? In there. But we're going to move the mic over here. Thank we're you, good. Marty. We're good. I got it. We're good. But we're going to go here. And uh, we're talking about the Crew Dragon there. And uh, you supplied these pictures to us today we showed there. So thank you, Marty. But great to have you here. What yep. uh, what was it like out there today? They they came in a Learjet? Well, that's that's NASA's corporate jet. That they, oh, okay. Yeah, they, they, when it's a SpaceX crew, they don't fly them in in the T-38s. They, they come in that way. Uh-huh. Um, everybody got off the plane. They had their masks on, and then they came out and then spoke, uh, did a nice little introduction. They were taking some questions from uh, from the media. A good sized crowd there. We had uh, really media crowd or good, only or yeah, uh, good, yeah, workers was, from the space center there. It was all Grab media. My... Uh, we have a, a good contingent of foreign media this time because uh, we have a Russian going up and uh, an astronaut from the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. So we've got uh, quite the international flavor this time, and there was there was some good questions and and a very good very good turnout. This was my first uh, SpaceX crew media Walk coverage out. for me yeah how many shuttles you think you did or boo i ran out of fingers and toes buddy I, yeah. I from the film 30, days 30 to the years yeah. digital days uh steve bowen there i didn't look up his three flights as a shuttle uh commander mm -hmm. and pilot i uh i'm not sure what steve flew i can look there a little I bit think you, he was on, with uh, him? i think he might have been on the coles flight 133 uh, yeah i think he was on uh, the, the the last flight of uh i'll show you there 133 uh, yeah yeah he was on 133 for yep. sure that was his third flight uh he was oh he was on 132 he's the anomaly that he flew back-to-back -back missions okay uh for in may 2010 and then february 2011 and then uh his first flight just scanning my shuttle scroll here can't come up with it though but did you hear the news about who's going to be at the Space Center? Canadian Julie Payette. When? This uh, week? When, Marty? Next month? In May. In May. In, oh, in okay. May. Okay, yeah, in May. That's a good deal there. Uh, we well, had Nick Thomas on uh, yesterday. So okay. well, I was just down at the Hyatt uh, bringing greetings from Robert and Dana. Oh, good. They said to say hi, getting ready for uh, Shuttle Fest 2. Right, I'm right. I'm excited about that. And, your uh, artwork's up there i saw that big fat alligator you got yep, in the yep. hallway he, there you showed me that uh, your brother's and, work too and uh yep. i told him i'll send him a couple of artemis launch shots uh, good he needs to put a couple of those up he has a rollout he has a good rollout shot up we're talking about the hyatt place uh titusville uh, uh ksc right there yep. at the 405 where you go into this visitors complex and uh that's our home for the shuttle fest until we really outgrow it we're looking forward to them we had a great great event with them there it's a, it's an awesome uh hotel and yep. uh you know it serves our purpose just right in there we got a danish uh, astronaut is backing up this crew by the way uh which is kind of interesting would bring some of our isa friends here okay uh, on there but uh, yeah three rookies so we're going to go from 594 humans to 597 oh. orbiting the earth here pretty quick getting close to that 600 who've orbited the earth Marty, what do we call those suborbital astronauts? Uh, Carmenauts. Carmenauts. Yep, after the Carmen <laughs> line, the physicist Carmen. Did you know that he found a jet propulsion lab, by the way? I did not that know that. Said, well, now you're staying now curious. Staying curious. You know there that you now. go. Uh, why is this different? Uh, why is it the same as a shuttle walkout uh, flying in? Uh, that they're always flying in like four or five days before the launch, quarantined, kiss their families goodbye, then get their serious face on. Any difference in what you see uh, uh, well, years ago? Well, besides coming in differently, I mean, each one uh, for the shuttle flights, they had two in the, each one of the T-38s. So there was usually a, a, a flight of four jets that would come in and they'd all taxi out. And then the, each astronaut would get out of the plane, climb down a ladder, and then like Mike Leinbach, shake their hands. Charlie Bolden would shake their hand mm -hmm. and they'd have a little chit chat. Well, this was all pre-COVID too. So like all the rules have changed now because when these guys got off of the plane, they had masks on. They went over, uh, over and greeted the, uh, the head of the space center 
and some other dignitaries that were there to give a talk and everybody had masks on. And then once they came up to like the microphones and actually spoke, they took their masks off Mm -hmm. and then, you know, they, they were answering questions and, uh, posing for pictures. And then there's a little sign that's over to the one side that has their names on it. And then they pose for shots there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. With that the was, jet uh, in the background. I don't know if you got that good. one. We, right uh, we, okay. uh, I know Chris Cassidy on there today, a uh, little man, a little eye candy for the girls out there. there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, he did a thing with his, they're doing a nonprofit promotion with hand prints there. Like okay. we at the American space museum are, our hands there. Uh, th- there's where you were talking about. Oh, uh, keep going the wrong way there. There you're talking yep. about the sign. I'd never yep. seen the sign before. I thought, is the band going to play too? The marching band uh, behind them? <laughs> get, get Max Q out of retirement. Though. Yeah, we need Max Q. Uh, fife and drum corps there with uh, oh, Wither, Witherby beating the, the there drums go. there and uh, get Hoot some, Gibson Hoot on Gibson the pipe. The guitar. Yeah. <laughs> that, wouldn't that be something? Uh, anyway, yeah, that was kind of unique. I thought this, yeah. this uh, kind of roll. Yeah, that there, was so. that was different. Like I said, I've seen pictures before. I mean, of course, the NASA photographers are there, plus all my friends on Facebook, Carlton and Ken, and right, uh, the whole gang was there. And Ken was, Kramer, Carlton Bailey. So, mm-hmm. uh, so how's everything at the Bailey Hacienda for your? Well, you know, I time? haven't been there yet. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I came in uh, early this morning. Well, we can get this show done and get over here and feed the squirrels. That's it. Here in about I, I, half hour's time. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I haven't. I, I literally came in this morning, went and got my credentials at 8 o'clock, and then went up to the press site. And then I shot some. There's a bunch of ospreys up there that have a nest. That's right in the parking lot. Of that the was restaurant. beautiful. Yeah, you sent a picture of that. You see that? The American okay. flag. And yep. so at first, I thought it was eagles, but then I thought, oh, no, yep. those are ospreys. Because yep. the big the eagles have supposedly created a new nest out there. Well, I saw one. one sitting on the telephone pole going up Route 3. Uh-huh. It, was, it wasn't in the nest, but it was sitting on the pole, like close to where that old nest was. Right, came which down. broke, yeah. So I haven't seen the new nest yet. And, we uh, probably have one out there. And uh, So uh, you're here on Tuesday. The launch is going to be Saturday. Saturday night, Sunday morning, 2.07. Uh, what is the rhythm like for you uh, photographers out there today? Well, uh, or, or the rest of the week? You're going to set up remote? It's kind of slow, actually, because they came in. I guess this is normal. I don't know as far as how many days out they were. Uh, but there's really no other activity until Saturday. Uh, remotes go out, I think, in the morning. And then Saturday is going to be a jam-packed day with crew walk out and then launch at two o'clock in the morning and then depending on how late it goes for them to pull the cameras so it's going to be a long it'll be a long saturday <laughs> have you looked at the weather the uh, prediction uh, of the 45th space I, force I, I have not i didn't hear anybody crying uh, this morning up there so i, I think it, it looks good but nobody was saying anything horrible but you know, good, it's, good. It's Florida. So. Well, it is Florida. Get, get rid of this Pennsylvania <laughs> know, sweater there, my friend. Well, I was in 90 <laughs> some degrees. I was tomorrow. in Michigan last on, uh, Saturday, yeah. on Saturday. Yeah, you, and you said you and we felt sorry for you there. So, yeah, for Dave Stangy well, and was, Larry Pusker. There was snow there. on the ground up there. Ooh. It's like plowable snow that they had to push out of the parking lot. I was at a hotel up there doing a. a well, as you see, it's beautiful here. It's actually springtime here. The, the, the leaves are. are starting to bud out you see a lot of flowers all the the botanical places are having their 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 peaks uh, and all that stuff so uh, we're glad to have you down here well, we'll you. get you on uh, uh, here maybe friday or something uh, the, the rest of the week here like i said tomorrow uh, we're gonna have the recorded uh, interview with after or not charlie walker uh and uh don't know what we're doing the rest of the week maybe we'll get you in here on friday there a, with carlton well i heard i was down at the hyatt talking to robert and dana and they told me that there is a launch on thursday afternoon did you know that yeah like three in the afternoon or something two, uh, two no 147 one, yeah. is what i'm gonna say off the top of my head okay so, so good well, I, i'll uh find a place to see that that was an extra added bonus i didn't know yeah i didn't know there was one 
Well, we're experiencing a you know a launch about every every week, you know, and uh, you know we're gonna have to go over to Orlando to those attractions to get away from these noisy rockets on this space coast and get some peace of mind over here. I'm telling you, I'll take the rocket boom over the uh, <laughs> roller coaster screams any day. Yeah, there you go. All right, brother. We're glad to see you, man. Head to head, safe Thank trip you. here. I suppose we'll be visiting Zarellas a time or two over this, I and uh, I'm saying a prayer to. Carlton and all that he's got to put up with this weekend with uh, but really it's a lot of fun the, the rhythm of the launches uh, increases uh, our our guests here at the American Space Museum and uh, of course friends like uh, Mark Usiak here that's done so much for our museum already always great to see you there uh, say hi to big brother hey Tom Hey, Chris Kelly, if you're watching, he was texting me as I was driving over. Yeah, there. we so talked, uh, Marty call. talked to Chris there a little okay. bit, and, I'm, and uh, Chris and I need to get together and get our our uh, our, our uh, signals over. together for our wonderful uh, Shuttle Fest. It's going to be uh, an event that we hope our museum uh, uh, is known for many years down the road. So, And by the way, Chris Kelly, we enjoyed looking at your father's National Geographic uh, cover of John Glenn's re-entry there. Uh, uh, Nick Thomas really had a fun time talking about Ooh, that. And okay. uh, uh, the one and only Paul Cowley and his son, uh, who's also unique in his own right there, Chris. So, Quite the talent. That's Quite right. Talent that's right. Man. Well, thank you all for sticking with us on Stay Curious here. Little walk-in guest there. I'll pull you on here if you come into our <laughs> Stay Curious studio and get Marty to mic you up there. So, Marty, anything else to take care of? Uh, Carlton said it's a 5% chance of no go. How much? 5% no go, which means 95. No, 5% no go. All right. Well, I'll that's take a, those odds any day. Uh, well, that's going to be fun. And these launches in the middle of the night have a different edge to them because, you know, you know you're going to be sleep deprived, particularly a senior citizen like me that hits the bed at 9 o'clock. Uh, not really, but uh, I don't get up at 4. I go to bed at midnight and get up at 8. But the uh they aren't aren't they there's a different edge to them in the yeah, middle of the night yeah yeah it, it's not the photo well some photographers like it i mean yeah. it, and it has its advantage. i wouldn't like it because you can't see the payload right but, right but, and it's but but no i'm just saying the ambience of the night mm -hmm. the excitement and then the night's lit up so it's going to be fun and you're going to be watching it on all kinds of social media and we're going to be sharing the pictures with you and I'm sure we'll be sharing a picture or two as you get a, a picture of the bird in, in your uh, viewfinder there. Yeah, I believe so, uh, Ellie in Space may be broadcasting live. Ellie in Space, uh, we may have her back on here. So uh, all kinds of guests that we hope. If you're in town, stop by and see us around uh, uh, quarter till four. And and uh, we'll give a shout out. You can give a shout out to your friends on on the uh, stay curious here so Absolutely. thank you mark usiak thank you marty winkle thank you karen conklin our executive director for allowing us to do what we love to do that is keeping you staying curious and we will see you tomorrow with astronaut charlie du charlie walker recorded in a fabulous interview all to bridge the space between us see you tomorrow